Yo. Yo. Mm. Yeah. Uh huh. Ah. Uh. We were told we should do a podcast. 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 Told we should do a podcast. Oh. Podcast. Whoa. Mm. Whoa. And so now we're doing a and podcast. So, yeah, we're, so, no. P-O-D. Three white guys doing a podcast. We have we're opinions. It's super original. Yeah. Super original. Um, so like this one. is, yeah. for anyone who, who didn't get the last podcast we did, last episode, it was part one of the origins of Viva La Dirt League, pretty mm. much. Yeah. I, think, I don't know what we're calling it exactly. Yeah, maybe that. This will be part two of the origins of Viva La Dirt League. I'm just going to get straight into it. Although, I, I might preface, you said this in the last episode. I don't think you need to, if you haven't heard the previous episode of the podcast, don't worry too much because this is literally the point where you said we sh- at, at the point of Adam joining Viva La Dirt League, we should have changed the name. Yes. Because Viva La Dirt League changed so radically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we were pitching that. Like, really, well we should have a started YouTube channel. a new YouTube channel. Yeah. Which would have been like, at the time, we, I think we even mentioned this in the last one, the idea of losing 20,000 subscribers was was too much to bear because that yeah. was just like to us that was an insane number. And it's and all like that 20,000 people still could have been the reason why we succeeded hypothetically. If we started something new, we wouldn't we might not have had that little maybe, injection. You're, you're, I don't you're, know. I am pretty sure. You May, maybe, maybe anyway. you never know. You I'd never love know. To, I'd love to f- see a parallel universe where we did start a brand new thing and see how that went. Well, okay, so um so at this point in the Viva La Dirt League journey, we met Adam, mm. and he joined Adam. Viva La Dirt League. My first Adam. question is, when and how did Adam join Viva La Dirt League? The, the way I remember it, so we actually did meet a couple of times prior to like the, me, me joining. Well, the first time we actually worked together, but you guys came over to my flat at the time because you were doing a Heineken it was commercial? a random. It was, a, it was Heineken. It was Heineken. And we met you through a mutual friend who was just like, I know a guy who could act in this thing. Yeah. I think it was just for acting. It was. Yeah. It was just for acting. Yeah. You literally, you, you, I can't remember what it was now, but you needed me to do something. We needed remember. you to stand on a like an paper cup and, and there was a pen underneath That's and you were, right. you were pretending there wasn't. And then ended up, do you have any memory of this I have, at all? I know it was a, I, a, a Stein, Heineken. Yeah. A Heineken thing. And that's all I remember. I still I, remember Adam's reaction for some reason. So it was filmed on my 5D and it would start on his foot, slammed it and then went up to his face and he went, and I was like, you can't see my face. Well, maybe you can. Um, there, and he just, he had this great reaction, comedic reaction to pretending to stand on a pin. Hey, th- th- thinking about going back to that, because yeah. you've just unlocked that memory for yeah, me, basically. You're welcome. Is that kind of is my role a lot in a lot of Viva skits these yeah. days is like the getting hurt, falling over, eating weird things, eating throwing weird things. up. Adam weird shit <laughs> compilation video will hit it. YouTube one day. That yeah, will, exactly. will happen. That will happen. You are definitely the one who's who's willing to do the 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 stuff I'm not willing yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah. So <laughs> my my memory of this is that we found Adam and we thought oh, he was cool to work with. Yeah. Nothing happened immediately. Nothing Not happened there. That. No, no, no. And no. then we were um in preparation for what was going to be uh what's kind of leads straight into my next question which is um what was wrecked. Um, but but that's how I remember. Like it was the preparation for the our big uh, ma- was it yeah. called a magnum opus? <laughs> we, were, magnum we, we were calling it a magnum opus. opus. Yeah. And and you guys. So okay, I have a, I have a question for you guys. Were, were, were you feeling at that point stuck on Rick or something? Oh man, like I have vague memories of it. I think the the story very quickly became. Uh, very daunting and very big to me and I didn't have the necessary tools as a writer to best tackle that I didn't know how to structure something that wasn't just a three minute sketch we were talking about effectively a feature film for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about Wrecked is, was a was a essentially a feature film but it was a web yeah. series like 10 to 15 minute episodes and I think we did ended up doing like 10 episodes I think we did 10 maybe 8 to 10 yeah maybe 8 to 10 yeah so a feature film yeah. split up. But long story short, we got advice to get you on board to help with the right with well, yeah. the writing structure. Pr- prior to that, I had been. I mean, I'd been doing many things, but one of the things I was doing was being a writing czar for other people, where I'd come in, be a fresh set of eyes because I knew a lot about writing. I could help and go, "This is not working. This is working. How about this?" All yeah, that kind of, all that stuff a writing czar yeah. does. And yeah, I I remember basically you guys came round to my flat again. And I just had a massive whiteboard, a whole lot of um, post-it notes. And you knew the rules. Like, yeah. you knew the rules of writing. And I don't think I was even really necessarily aware there were rules for writing about just, like, 
just just how to tell a story. Mm. And I think we had like two or three sessions and we were all just kind of jamming. And then I found out that you guys like StarCraft as well. And yeah. we started jamming a little bit of StarCraft here and there. Yeah. Starcraft and I remember too, like, and, and, so it was before we filmed Rick, you joined day. <coughs> Is that right? That was going to be my next, what, one of my questions was, yeah, was, before was you it filmed before the pilot? or after we filmed Rick? We'd done the pilot. Joined? Oh, yeah. we filmed Rick. Ages after. Yeah, right. Ages after. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. um, we got into doing the Hearthstone. So, Q, next question, I'm not sure. Is uh, that <laughs> what, what I remember then is kind of just being like, I love, because I love board. Yeah. And I, as I said in the last podcast, I could see the potential there. Yeah. And I guess we just started talking about that and also the uh, idea of uh, doing other skits. Yeah. And I, I have a, a vague, it's very vague. All well, these memories are vague. They, uh, we, it wasn't just a spare of the moment thing. Rowan and I went away and we had a chat about it. Like, like, do we, I think we'd been considering a third member for a while like, yeah. at this point. And we're like, dude, this guy ticks the boxes. He really, he does. Um, and we, we need, we knew we needed a third, uh, Adam for, is, is posing for the camera right now. Sorry. If you want to see that pose, <laughs> check out the V. Um, and we, we were like, we, we need a third member. We need a new, fresh blood. We need some more energy injected into, into Viva. And because uh, I, th- I think I think we felt Viva was kind of on the way out. If we didn't try something new, yeah. I'm pretty sure we, we were aware Viva was going to fall over and uh, It die. just needed an injection it of energy. It needed something. Yeah. yeah. And uh, pretty soon after, yeah, probably the next day we approached Adam and we're like, yeah, what up? Want to do more stuff? Because yeah. really the first things I was involved in was actually, well, the first thing rather I was involved in was um, uh, the, music video? the music video. I can't yeah. remember the name. Legacy of Legacy, Legacy, the Legacy, Legacy music oh, video. It was for the release of the StarCraft yeah. Uh, yeah. Legacy of and the I, Void. And I imagine, again, that would have just been based around the fact that we had been chatting, we'd been hanging out, we'd been playing StarCraft, yeah. and it was, and you guys obviously had this conversation, it was like, well, let's get Adam involved too. I remember being very actually... Uh, when it, the more I found out about Adam, the more I was like, oh, "Holy shit!" Because you you were working for a really legit com- TV commercial company, done some great directing TV commercials, direct, literally directing TV commercials, which to me at the time was mind blowing. Uh, and you'd done like like a bunch of other stuff, some Power, Power Rangers, Rangers and. and- um, I remember being like really quite intimidated once I found out more and more of the stuff. I was like, yeah. "Oh my god, he's actually like." Because for me, I've been perpetually floating around the industry. Like I'd never actually, I, and to this day, not really been a part of it. We're still, like, we're kind still of have created progress. our own yeah. industry, but we're not. We are definitely not in the film industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I'm yeah. going to jump ahead a little bit now. So we 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 figured out a flow of skits and stuff, and we were like, okay, this is really starting to work. How did Epic MP Seaman get created? So we've been doing the Hearthstone skits for a wee while, and they were doing pretty well. They're actually genuinely getting us subscribers and. We'd obviously been doing more board as well, and we'd wanted to do. I think had we done already done the um, if Prometheus, how Prometheus should yes. have ended yep. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we had ideas floating around. We'd done wild cards, and I went into our ideas drive, which we had, uh, which we had at the time, um, where we just chuck skit ideas into. And I went in and saw Alan had made just literally a a one line document, which was. From memory, it was something along the lines of what if an NPC in a video game was sentient? Mm. And I was just like, <laughs> and like with my, like at the, I've always been a big World of Warcraft fan, just like I, I feel like it must have been just an afternoon or something. And I wrote like 12 or 15 ideas for what would eventually be the first, a lot of the episodes for the first couple of seasons of NPC Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at, at, it's funny, was, at the moment, that seems like such a like, Obvious idea, like oh yeah, well, yeah, uh, an NPC is sentient, yeah, uh, or like the world from an NPC's perspective just feels such an obvious idea now. But at the time, that was we'd never, was never really properly new. Yeah. occurred to us, and it wasn't very, wasn't a thing that was well known on the internet. By the way, in the yeah. same document, I think was uh, or in a separate document, possibly was one HP McGee, which we've still never done. I think. We've oh, never still never yeah. done that. That's right. One HP. We've maybe. kind of we've done. done we've done. Yeah. Kind of did. There was a variation of a it on D and D logic, right? And, kind and a variation in like, what does one HP yeah. look like? Uh, but do you want to rewind and tell wh- how that line of I mean random line ended up in a text? God, document? man, I can't remember the origin. I I have a uh, uh, 
a, a, an imagination that um, I need to grab ideas as they float by or I'm not going to catch them and I'll, fe- I'll forget about them. And I pro- it was genuinely probably just one of those moments where I was playing a video game, a funny thing happened with an NPC in the background or I felt sad for an NPC in the background or something. I was like, what if that person was real? Holy shit, what if that person was real? And just opened the laptop and, and jotted the idea down. And it was definitely not a fully fleshed out idea. I just, I knew there was something there. Um, but I had no idea that that was going to be something that we like latched onto and became like one of our, no, no our oh. core IP. In the video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's uh, as soon as I saw how excited you were, I think we, it just became clear that it was the next thing we should jump on. I, I, I'm not sure what your questions are, but are we going to delve into like the first season, like the costumes and and the location and everything for NPC Man? Because that was a yeah, big deal I, I, at the time. I, my, this is what my questions were. I didn't know how to structure these questions and in the order because what my question, my original question was, what were some of the key milestones of success for Viva La Dirt League? And then I was like, okay, well let's start with Epic NPC Man. Yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna. This be the. I'm assuming we're probably gonna mention PUBG Logic being the next big milestone. Mm-hmm. But while we're on Epic NPC Man. Yeah, let's talk about that. Um, because how, like, how did the first how did it, the first few filming blocks look? look? Yeah, because uh, at at that point it was still the three of us. It was the three of us making everything. So the Hearthstone skits uh, was just us. Board was just us. We were still doing one hundred percent of the job. Yeah, yeah. And I think all three of us knew that we had a pretty special idea a- ahead of us, and we were like, we can't half ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this was the first time that we actually got camera people on board and sound people on board. That was for Epic Game of Sam, eh? Epic Even from day one we had. From uh, day one oh, we had Fergus. helping us out. Yeah, we had, yeah. We had Fergus from day one. But I remember was, sound was the thing where we a bit uh, like, yeah. get that kid. To, yeah, we, we just yeah. got a random person who could hold a boom yeah, mic, yeah. basically. That's but still we had, we had sound yeah. as opposed to even board for the longest time after that was just 5D at the little mic on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that would have been over 100% of our budget, like of our income like spent on these things. Oh my God. And uh, we would have been putting our own money into it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So this is the first time where we're going, okay, this is serious. And yeah. like, so there was, so there was getting crew, but then there was also, we're like, we need a location and where the fuck are we going to yeah, find man. a fantasy village? It doesn't yeah. exist. And, and I can't remember exactly how we stumbled upon Howick village. I had no idea it existed until we found it. I, I, I did know it existed, but, I assumed it was just through you, through you, like, because you... I had been there before, but I think we just literally did a Google image search or something. Right, maybe. And was like, Fantasy Village Auckland, and then the image came up, and I was like, oh my God, Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. And you, surely And then you have been there as a kid, right? Yeah. With right. flood back, like, oh, that's right. I've got vague memories of walking down the, yeah, yeah. the yeah. school trips. But yeah. I hadn't been in so long, I couldn't really remember what it was like. Yeah. And then when we went there and found Greg, what is now yeah. Greg's it's house, still, we were just like, this is fucking perfect. It's, it's insane that, that because that is, the thing it is perfect. Greg's sod house and that's, that strip of road and the, the intersection at the top and the lake, Bodger's base, like they're all, that's the perfect location. There's, there's, there's a, a reason we literally have still, are still using that spot. Yeah. And if we ever get so lucky to, the, the, Howick Historical Village is an incredible location, but it's limited because it's really colonial. There's a lot of, like, the town centre they've got at the top does not really work for Epic Museum. It's, it's very, all kind of 18, uh, uh, late 18, early 1900s. Yeah. Um, and if we ever get so luck, lucky to recreate this somewhere, I, we, I, w- I would want to recapture the, yes, the exactly what Howick Historical Village has for Greg's Hut, that road and those different, like, intersections. What, yeah. what do you think about the first uh, season, I'll call it, the first time we used to film at Howick? What do you think that has... In- can, I, can I pause you before yeah. that? I think there's one other key before that first filming day, and that was us going, not, up until this point, we'd just done human skits, human clothes yeah, yeah. in the real world, yeah. and we didn't have fantasy costumes, basically, and we're like, oh, shit. That we obviously need to have fantasy costumes of some description. And so we reached out to a, um, a friend of a friend of a friend who ha- ran a LARPing group. Oh, yeah. Um, and basically he had a 
it, it was a one. It felt like a freaking wonderland back then. In his garage. In his garage. Yeah, yeah. In his garage. Of just racks and racks and racks of costumes. There are still some old photos of us trying this stuff. Greg very close and very nearly had a hat. Yeah, yeah. So, so was, that, to was that before our very first day of filming? We went to Patrick's house and we're like, um, we hadn't gone to first scene or anything. We just went no. straight, straight to went straight to Patrick's house. We didn't, we, didn't the, we didn't have the. By the way, first scene is a, a costume hire place. We didn't have the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, that would have cost would have hundreds been of dollars. Super, yeah, it would. This would have been super instrumental into the creation of like some of these core characters. Like we would have said, we want to skip where there's this stupid NBC who says one line. And we didn't even know if he was going to be a fisherman. We were there kind of going, I guess he could wear a hat. This hat. hat. We didn't even know what line of dialogue this? he was going to say. I remember coming up where we came up with a nice day of a fishing. A, a day or two what, before. Yeah, a day or two before. And it, it was very close to being, be, be careful for yeah, monsters yeah, out there. Yeah, watch out for monsters out there. Watch out for monsters out there. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and he could have been a completely different character. Yeah, and, and also for, for, probably... for Greg, the garlic farmer. Yeah, it was literally we got the underclothes, we got the we got the shirt and the pants, we got the vest, and we're like, nice. It's kind of yeah, it, that's good. And then we're like, he needs, it needs, just needs, he needs one little... more thing. He yeah. just doesn't quite feel like a peasant yet. What yeah. is it? And Patrick was literally just like, string of garlic. Well, like, yeah, perfect. In fact, I think that might have been like, what now? What should we call him? Yeah. Um, uh, something garlic. What, what Greg, Greg the garlic farmer? I remember being quite a qu- quick yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's insane. So Patrick really had a massive role to play in the creation. Yeah, of, yeah. Like huge, a huge lot role of the visuals. Yeah, yeah. And then we just got a whole lot of other like cloaks and capes and swords and shirts and yeah. stuff. And yeah. <laughs> Patrick was very nice. He just let us take a whole lot of stuff away, basically. Yeah, wow. And then on the day we'd get to Howick Village and just kind of go. I guess I'm a maze character, so a cloak. Yeah. And up wood is my stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> We're just playing, literally just playing dress ups. Like, okay, I'm going to dress up as um, some sort of kind of knight character, put this helmet on and that. Is that what is Mem- it like? Remember that like f- Rome, hel- Rome, rubber helmet? Yeah, that golden that, one. That golden one. Yeah. That you yeah. Were, yeah. <laughs> oh, Why don't you try it on now? Yeah, that, yeah, that character, yeah. He has not come back in a long time. <laughs> like, he needs to return. Probably like, for a good reason. Maybe Man, you might be right. Yeah, I really like. It. Okay, sorry, Ron. That, that was a big. Um, no, no, it's, it's good to go back and figure out. Well, that's kind of my next question is: What do you think we? How do you think those early days of the way we started filming have have affected have affected the way we film now? Well, I I feel like it can be seen, man, because we were spending money on this. We were just trying to get maximum return on investment. We we. As soon as we started NPC, we started doing the multiple skits a day. Yeah, right? we had up yeah. until that point, we had. Maybe we would do two skits Maybe. when we're doing board if we had a couple of yeah. ideas. But we, up until that point, it was always just one skit. Yeah. We'd find an afternoon, we'd do one skit. Yeah, we'd move on we'd return lines. on investment. Roy was not our friend at this point. And, but I remember we got all this money together for it, whatever we could afford. And we we'd, 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 we'd got the costumes, like, we'd got the locations, we're paying some people for yeah. cameras and We sound. need to get as many episodes out of this as we can. And I, like, I remember there were some days we got eight. I think but, uh, but, uh, I think, I think that was season two. Maybe we that was season eight. two. Been season eight. one, yeah. I think we got. Yeah, you might be right. Um, that's bonkers. That's bonkers. They, they're obviously significantly shorter and more simple. And we're just kind of like, because the notion is that classic, like the innocence of YouTube thing. This the notion of like a skit series about self-aware NPCs was almost enough. Like yeah, you didn't yeah. have to get into these well, crazy like uh, and setups and, and intricate the, sketch ideas. For what, so the literal like idea number one Actually, never became an episode because we re- we got there what? on the day and filmed. It. Remember we and we filmed it and it was too boring. It was too simple. It was too oh, simple. Was that, it the one where just I, Greg was? I, so you said you said idea number one, which which spawned the idea of epic. M- you do it. <laughs> epic NPC man. The, the idea that spawned that yeah. was that you have this fucking cool big exploding intro of this uh, yeah. of guy, and then he's standing there. Trying to give away a quest, yeah, and uh, someone runs past. And you go, oh, oh, and you go, oh, ah, they go, and, and they then go. it ends, and then it goes, and then it goes again. again. <laughs> yeah, big Yeah, that's the whole the whole point of it was that he's not epic. It's, we're, 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 we're deliberately going. It's so epic when he's just standing there doing nothing, and yeah. then an adventurer w- runs past. Yeah, that yeah. was the gag. God, I totally that, that, forgot that, that was one. the gag of season wow. one. Is that you're underwhelming? You're a yeah, background a boring character. episode. <laughs> I know. And it was unfortunate when. <laughs> I think because we did film it, that exists. Well, probably doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, one um, In context of the other six episodes we did that day, it was boring yeah. because we had yeah. the Balin episode, which was very funny. We had Brit's uh, armor logic episode, which was fucking great. 
Yeah. Uh, I Skip, remember. which I feel is the quintessential. Skip, which, is, like, Skip, I mean, which was meant to be episode two. Yeah. And yeah. we ended up making episode one. Yeah. Did um, Skip, it was a great introduction to, it became a great introduction yeah, to yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, I, I think that basically it was, it was Epic and Buscemian that basically set up the template for how we film now. Yeah. Which well, is, we, so. is that we can get, four, like, now it's less, but four skits a day. Mm. Um, because we just, which I don't know if we necessarily would have done that without that, that kind of early style. Well, if yeah, I think no. of most other YouTubers or people that, uh, like, for example, uh, that Australian D&D ones. Oh, uh, Deathstalker. Uh, Deathstalker. They only do one skit a day. Yeah. Yeah, well. Because that's what the film industry tells you to do is do one thing a day. And if it's bigger, spread it across multiple days. Mm. Yeah. Um, we can't do that. We yeah. kind of realized that, no, we can. And not only, not only did it set up the way we film, it set up the style. Uh, uh, the style of comedy was already set up from board, but it set up the style of the logic, the series, which is. Basically uh, game point, logic point, be like. Yeah. Point at a thing be like, like, yeah. isn't it? Uh, <laughs> NBCs with only one dialogue. What? Like, What's up with that? Really, you could call based on our structure, you would actually call it RPG logic now, right. or yeah, just yeah. video game logic. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was probably our first, and still is our kind of our main intellectual property now. Our first big successful thing. Mm -hmm. What was the next? What well, pause? What were some of our key milestones? Well, I think. before for PUBG, uh, before we started doing PUBG, there was another milestone, which was when we started memeing stuff on Facebook. Yes. And yeah. so we, we already had maybe, maybe done two seasons of, or t two sets of NPC men. And we'd had, Ali was around and bored by then. And what happened was uh, the very first thing we ever had virality on was Ali's uh, Girl Gamer episode when you're going, yeah, all the swear words. Beep, 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 yeah, beep, beep, that one beep. went gangbusters, and it's still relative to today. It went insane, like, yeah. like millions and millions of views. And yeah. you and you just kind of got it, put it square yep. format. You'd put a title. Like I remember sub uh, subtitling. It took a long time. Like, oh. Yeah, I wasn't good at this stuff. Meme it took format. me a long time to meme meme it up. But I just wanted to try this format out, and it. The, yeah, it just but went off for, in it. On for, for memory, it wasn't the first thing we memed. Maybe not. Because no. uh, we, I think we memed all of NPC Man, and then okay. it was like, let's start meme, and it was doing okay, and we started memeing board, and then it was, people came in from that episode with you, Ellie, and then found all of the other ones, yeah. and it was just like, and started the yeah, worst Yeah, I remember thing. that was, oh God, I still remember like, going to bed. This, this was, I think this was one of those, Big moments for me was was seeing the numbers rise on Facebook. Like every time you refreshed, it was up like several dozen. It was just the momentum mm -hmm. was nuts, and mm -hmm. I was like, "Holy shit!" Like this Proper could virality. be a viable. We we can do this. But at I mean, that stage, we weren't making any money. We still Facebook. weren't making money, but it was like well, I, what I, Facebook wasn't monetized. Yeah, yeah, Facebook wasn't monetized, but Facebook. I knew there was power in the number. Like yeah, yeah. I I like there's always whatever how big that number is. If the if the number next to your your name, Viva La Dilly, gets big enough, money will find a way yeah. to yeah, you, yeah. and you know fans will find a way, and you could hypothetically make a living from it. I remember seeing this uh, our subscribers followers go up on Facebook, being like, "Holy shit, this could genuinely happen so, from that one meme vir going viral." Was it? A, I don't know what year we're talking about right now, but was it around this time that we were making just enough money, probably only from YouTube? Yeah, that I think it so. was enough yeah. that you guys were still working. We were still working. We were definitely still working because yeah. I remember showing people at work being like, look at this, there's our number on Facebook. And then you'd refresh and yeah. go, look, I just got higher. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going to work, just watching that number at so work. I'd literally just have my phone on my desk at work, just going refresh. Refresh. And there was refresh. enough money. We were making enough money that it could, I could be the full time editor. Yeah. Well, yeah, because all of this virality on, yeah. you, on Facebook where we weren't making money was going over to YouTube yeah. where we could monetize this it. This is where I became addicted to Social Blade, actually. I think it was <laughs> yeah. very early on I became addicted to Social. And we would have, we went out for drinks sometimes to, to celebrate, I think. We went out for a drink. I remember this on Mount Eden, really close to Garden Shed. I thought it was Garden Anyway, 
it was weird. And we put the phone on the table and social oh, blades yeah. watching the For numbers sure. go up while we had a drink. <laughs> like it was just like, it was, it meant so, it was just like whole, it was the yeah. fourth member of Vive was this number that was just rising. <laughs> social blade, yeah. And it was yeah. social, and I, I was addicted. Oh, I still was social, when it was a live count. I know, there's not a live count of social blade anymore, and it's just so much. YouTube it's nowhere it's near. So YouTube it's has just it. not quite as addictive. It's not quite as addictive. Social Blade was. You just put it there, you have a drink, you get the phone up or whatever, yeah. and then you'd every, maybe once every couple of minutes, like once every two minutes, you'd set another sub. Oh, this this is before for a while there it was like several several new ones a minute like or especially when we first released that meme it would go gang it was going gangbusters on on YouTube oh YouTube yeah oh, yeah. yeah yeah now the idea I almost want to talk about the idea of memeing because a lot of our fans will be very familiar with what we do on Facebook now which is have the the what we call the meme title up the top and then the wacky subtitles yeah. That was at the time, like, I, we were pretty on trend to start doing that. As other other channels had started doing it, I feel like it was popularized by the likes of Lad Bible and, yeah. and those kind of ones. We were like, let's do it and try and do it slightly better and yeah. do it with good content. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and the, the, yeah, that style that we have right now, we prior to that hadn't been doing it because Facebook really to us was just like, ah, oh, just put the video on there. We it was. Yeah, yeah. It was just, just put the video on. Well. Yeah. And so to change that format and, and actually start seeing growth on there was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And see it like just blow up like that. So, and it blitzed past YouTube. Didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I remember, like, well, YouTube has now caught up and surpassed Facebook again. Was there a, but, there was a point there where we, we kind of, we, we, if you're gloating about our success at, at the time to yeah. family or something, you would just talk about Facebook. Yeah. You go, oh, look at our Facebook. Yeah. We've got like, um, yeah. 800,000 mm -hmm. followers on mm -hmm. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whereas YouTube was like not even 100,000 or something. Yeah. You, YouTube was, YouTube was catching up, but yeah, it was below for a long, for longest time. How did PUBG Logic, uh, which I think is our, one of our big pillars of for growth. Sure, for sure. Oh my god! But potentially yeah. the biggest pillar of our growth in some yeah. way. How did that? What did that have to do with us? Um, and how did that start? So that came That's from from you. Yeah. This was uh, yeah. This was me. Just literally, it came from initially watching an IGN video of like a beta or something of just the, like the, the, a breakdown of the gameplay and showing what the gameplay was like. And it was one of those really like primal reactions to. That, that I had where I was like, holy shit, this is just like, this is a new thing. And it's like, I, I, I just could just tell it was going to take off. And I remember messaging you guys being like, guys, let's just jump on this. And well, we like, collectively. Talking talk about just the game to start with. Yeah. PUBG was, I was going to say game changing. The, it was industry. Oh, start, like man, genre, genre. That's what I'm genre, genre, genre defining. defining. Like, yeah. Well, it was the first remember, battle royale, right? As soon as it was. Maybe yeah. there was H1's. Do you want to what it's called? The first Maybe. super popular. Yeah, yeah. One, the one well, that right took off. Right. And I remember when you described it to me, I was like, that's what I've been wanting my entire fucking life. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I remember you describing it and I go, oh, it sounds pretty cool. And then you were like, let's get on to it. I was like, ah. Uh, yeah. I just want to play <laughs> Overwatch or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah. And then, and then I remember the first game of PUBG and just kind of go, okay, so I jump out of the plane. I watch and immediately just kind of like, oh, you fucking put it yeah. in my veins. Like the idea like just, that, oh my God, this map is anywhere. huge. And wait, I can go anywhere in this map and wait. And the circle closes in and wait. And it pushes and it us just, all to get and wait. And PUBG just captured the fucking internet, man. Yeah. It was insane. It's still, to this day, by a very large margin, yeah. holds number one spot on Steam charts. That's insane. It's still to very large margin to number and, two. And we just And we yeah. just got so lucky because we... I can't remember if we uh, if I if I showed you guys and we'd committed to it before the game was officially out or not. But regardless, like we, I was still in beta. It was, was in still beta, beta for a long time. We we managed to release content very early on. We we, we were the first ones on the bandwagon yeah. making content for PUBG, and with that came a wave of new subscribers of just people going, "Holy shit, these guys are making content for the game." And like, part of the reason for that is because of the way it is. How you just and like you just yeah, some normal clothes, clothes, the simplicity of it, but, man. And we're like, we've got fields in New Zealand. Yeah. We've got cameras. We've got, let's just fucking do it. But, and yeah. that was part of the Viva success is the kind of notion of let's just fucking give it let's a go. Let's just do it. And we we found 
ASIC props and yeah. like really cheap looking guns. Went to like Airsoft. We went to Airsoft and, and we eventually invested. I don't know if we did straight oh, away. Yeah. I think we, we, well, we borrowed a bunch from some friends oh, of mine. Yeah. At yeah. First. The very first guns that we got were Airsoft from uh, some mates of mine. And then a couple of ones you had from just childhood or something. I, I Oh God, why did I? I had some from a music video I'd shot oh, okay. a long yeah, time yeah. ago. Um, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, and we just jumped on and we just did it. And then we, we, we they weren't and the we just best got, things in the world, but we were releasing them on time yeah, and jumping but, but, on the bandwagon. By then we had got Tom on board and we got yeah. Ben on board and Rory was with us as oh, well. Yeah, Rory. I miss that, man. I miss, I miss, that, I miss Rory. Come back, Rory. Come back to New Zealand. Rory's not in New Zealand anymore. He's in the United Kingdom. He abandoned us. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm going to be, the, the, here's the awkward thing I'm going to say. Rory, Rory say was it. Fantastic, and yeah. I really liked working with him. But it was very quickly we realized, oh, when we're doing these PUBG logic skits, there are only four people on a team. Yeah. Oh, there's five of us here. Yeah. Filming. There were days, and there were, there were oh. days we hadn't planned too much, and yeah. we had to pick and choose like who, who yeah. who's not in this one. Yeah. And in the end, we've got Ben in the board skits. Fuck, it's just easier to just yeah. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It was the synergy I'm, I'm, thing. And because yeah. Roy was great, and I kind of yeah, mm -hmm. I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, man. But yeah, we, we just literally, I think we took a lot of learnings from NPC Man. We yeah. took the learnings of how we shoot. So yeah. that, that, again, doing at least four skits a day, the who we're shooting with by that stage uh, would move from Fergus to using Tom. Had we committed to three videos a week at this point? Uh, or was this, I think we may I have think done. we might have. I feel like really? PUBG was kind of, might have been around the beginning we were trying to do three videos a week. And because we were doing board NPC, yeah, man. and the Senate, yeah. like I really, I remember us kind of breaking it down like, okay, so PUBG logic is the gateway drug for a lot of people, they'll find yeah. us because of the PUBG, they'll see more because of it because PUBG was so, so fucking PUBG was popular everywhere. We just got to ride that wave, and we just got to ride that wave, and then they'll come in and they'll see that we're oh, they're doing another gaming show called Epic NPC Man, and they'll they might stay and subscribe for that maybe, and then. The, the hardcore fans, for the longest time, the hardcore fans were the ones that watched the board. So the board would do way worse than everything else. Yeah. But it get, got great engagement and people really, really liked it. And I think that locks hardcore fans down. And it, yeah. so we had this like, the system in place, and in, like it wasn't planned, but it, was, it worked, where we yeah, were just locking that, down way more fans. Than it kind of was the tier of priority. It was like, yeah. at that time, PUBG was the priority. Absolutely. This is what's bringing on yeah. new people. 100%. Epic yeah, MC Man was second. This is what might make the some people stick around. And yeah. then, Board is the thing we've been doing. We might as well keep doing it. Yeah. And it's also like creating saying, holding on to the hardcore. And creating hardcores. And it was just, it was kind of part of the reason was it was the free thing we could do essentially. It was just all those, the super easy thing. Yeah, we just yeah. had this free location. For the longest get. time, we were still, we were by this time, as, as I say, it was Tom. We were Tom. And I think we even had, Al, by the time we're doing uh, PUBG, we're getting Al for sound as well. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure Al was like day one PUBG. No, that would have been uh, a sound called Ben way back then. Oh, Ben Venable, that's right. Yeah. It was, yeah. and we're alternating between them. Yeah. Um, but we had a professional sound as well. Yeah. And so right. we're doing that for NPC Men, and we're doing that for uh, PUBG. But we were still, board was still shot at that point by the three of us. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we were, that's I, right. It was our free show. It was yeah, like, was it, was that, it, sorry, sorry, that was my thing. Yes, it was the free show. Yeah. Was it still us on a 5D Mark III Correct. even then? Correct. That's I remember hilarious. that. Like, I remember yeah. those times of it mm. being the camera there and then us all acting. That's right. And then, like, I remember yeah, doing that. And there were that. times yeah. like we'd be like, we'd do the bit full take and then we're like, was that rolling? Because none of us were yeah. behind the camera would go back. It's like, yeah. no, nobody pushed record. But, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. you have to push it and then go back around and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> nobody was monitoring it. Or was that in focus? I, play it back on this tiny monitor. Viva, we were getting success, but we still weren't uh, We still weren't making enough money to be able to pay for three nah, shows. Man, we, nah, no way. And it, there was a point, I remember at some point we were like, shall we start getting Tom? Yeah. So we start officially doing We did that board? MSI yeah. job with Tom. Which yeah, we, right. That was the first time we filmed board with a, with Tom. Yeah. and yeah. then we went back to doing it ourselves and then another sponsored job happened where we got Tom and then I think just after that we were like oh man it's so much better let's just keep yeah. on so my and Tom helped us out by the way for free for ages oh, as well got, yeah oh um, yeah that, um, Tom for, for quite a while during PUBG was doing it for free and it was only yeah. there was a point down, I don't know when that came but there was a point where like, we're making enough money now Tom we can pay you we a little pay. bit of money yeah and then eventually we were able to pay him way more than that but that's Thank, thank God. Thank God. And we can um, pay him like pay a good rate. rate now. A fair rate. Um, when did Viva switch from a hobby to a career for you? Ooh. I guess when we Ooh. quit our jobs. When, yeah. No, actually first, we, I'm going to flip that back on you, bro. <laughs> oh, when, oh, shit. when did it become a career for you? Because I assume the answer is going to be much earlier. Well, I get Well, there was a, there's an interesting one for me to ask to 
it's a not so defined one for me because as an actor the whole time anyway, it's not like I quit my job. I was um, kind of floating around as an actor and I was like, well, maybe now I can just focus on editing it. I'm still not 100% committed to this. I think, I can't give an exact date, but I know there was a moment where I, where I went, oh, this is more important to me now than my traditional acting career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a moment where I was like, oh, I'm going to start turning down auditions now because I can't be fucked anymore. Yeah. I don't care anymore. And I don't know when that it was, but that, that, that would be slow evolution, the moment. Probably, It'd be, wasn't it would have been some, some time around 2018. Around PGI, some, possibly. Yeah, around then, yeah. Um, yeah, I, th I think for me it was um, pretty obvious when I quit my job. Yeah, I suppose uh, so. When, when we still weren't making enough money from Viva La Dirt League to survive, and it was a fucking scary risk. Yeah. Well, well, why don't you guys talk about what that was like? Well, you go first. You quit first. So yeah. First. Um, it was something I'd wanted to do for a long time, but <clears throat> just being a um, someone who overthinks a lot, I probably didn't jump um, ship as quickly as I could have because I just like the security blanket of having a like, guaranteed Real paycheck job. from a pretty good job that I had. But for me, it was a, it was a combination of things. I, I enjoyed working with Viva so much more than this other job that I had. I remember one of them asking me, I was like, if, I, if you had to choose between this job and Viva Ledoux, like, what would you say? And I, I looked at him and I was like, you would be putting me in a very difficult position. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a loaded question ask, it was saying, depending on your answer, I will ask you to stop doing your hobby. For me, I, was, I knew what the answer was. It was, it was. it was Viva. I couldn't say that to him. But it was the, the best answer I could come up with was you, you will put me in a difficult spot and you know what I mean when I say that. And I just said, I said, I'm not going to do that. And also I quit. And it was this really spare of the moment thing that I've been thinking about for a long time. And they, there was an over email, so it was very easy to do. I was like, I'm not going to do that. And also I quit. Oh, damn them. it. There would be so much cool. Yeah, I know. I would be so much But then they called. You shouldn't have clarified that. I shouldn't have clarified that. that. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they then called me and they were like, well, what's going on? I was like, yeah. So there was like a little, like, yeah, you yeah. know, I, I did go, this is my decision. And I was confident. I, I was wary, but I was confident Viva would make it. Mm. I'd saved up enough money as a, cushion for a while I thought it very quickly evaporated actually so we needed to start making money <laughs> yeah. but at the time I left I was like I think we can do this yeah, yeah. interestingly my story is I really liked my job yeah I, well, not, uh, I really liked my work and I really liked being able to make TV commercials and be creative and the people I worked with were fucking amazing yeah yeah, you had, a, you had a great job I and, really yeah. enjoyed visiting your, yeah. your work and working for TVNZ TVNZ was a very I mean, it's a big company, but it was very uh, um, good at making sure its employees were happy. Mm. And there, there was a lot. There still is a lot of people that work at TVNZ that have worked there for decades because yeah. it's a good place to work. So it was. I mean, it was still a no-brainer for me, but it was a lot more of a difficult decision for me to leave because I really felt like Viva aside. I like if I didn't have Viva, there was a very, very clear career path for me. Yes. You had, um, a, you had the best job out of the two of us and it was yeah. very pay-wise as well, but also just, it was just a cushy job with genuinely cool, cool creative stuff going on. Anyway, yeah. 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 I, I didn't, I mean, I was making TV commercials, so now and again, you know, I'd get a, I'd get a big commercial that I could really sink my teeth in, but, into, but 70% of the time I was making just like really small TV commercials that were pretty shit, which I didn't care much about. Yeah. So the work was not always like absolutely stunning, nah. which is why I obviously chose Viva. But um, it, it was something I loved. And as I say, I could see a career path. So it was, for me, it was really hard to quit. Yeah. Like I, I, I broke down in tears in front of my boss when I said that I was quitting because yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't want to leave, but Viva is so much more important to me. Yeah. As some, and I could obviously, I could see the future as well. I, yeah. I could see, with the graphs of the growth of Viva, I was like, this is going to be something big and I want to have a crack at it basically. Yeah. I remember I couldn't actually, I, I actually, after quitting the next year, went and freelanced for TVNZ for a while as well. I did a little bit with the other company too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah there we go. A very long way of answering your question, Ron. That, yeah. was, that was when I, because it genuinely became a career because at that point we were getting paid significantly less than our jobs, but we were getting paid. 
there was enough money mm. to pay rent. Sorry for interrupting this podcast, but uh, yeah, we we are sponsoring this episode. Uh, VLDL.shop is sponsoring this episode. Uh, we have incredible products over there at VLDL.shop, including the Tech Town Welcome Bundle, which includes a mug, a Tech Town pen, don't drop it, and the lanyard. And you get an exclusive welcome from manager Rowan. And there's lots of other incredible merch over there. VLDL.shop, link in the description below. Back to the podcast. My next question is, um, when did your family start taking Viva seriously? I, yeah. I, like how was, tell me a little bit about your journey with it going from t- talking about it to your family and how, how they be- started to realize, oh, this is not going away. <laughs> yeah. As a, yeah, God. Different members of the family took, were very different. Like my brother, who's a big gamer, was just instantly like, oh man, he got it. you guys are fucking smashing it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then a few other younger members of the family like, oh my God, yes, this, this is amazing. Yeah. I don't think my nana ever got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And it was a slow progression for my parents. Very slow progression. I think it was the same for me. It was a slow progression where, and they, I, they didn't, I don't think they said anything, but I know they would have, um, would have tried to talk me out of leaving if I'd consulted their, <laughs> their opinion. Would have been like, if I was, to cons- uh, they would have stopped me leaving. Sorry, my old oh, job. I tried to, to leave TV and said, my parents were like, can't, can you not do both for a while longer? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I can't, no. Yeah. I need to. Uh, but uh, like older generations than my parents, uh, very slowly, I think they, they always just thought it was a hobby. Um, oh man, that's a, Difficult question. I, I, one story that I always go back to is, is even when we were experiencing pretty good success, like we'd probably, Chelsea and I might've bought a house at this point, even based off what we were um, earning at Viva. My Chelsea's grandparents still referred to the content we were making as the silly little videos you make with your friends. <laughs> and it was like this, they didn't mean anything by it. Yeah. I think they would try, like, it was actually like, there they they was kind of like a, they were just trying to get a conversation started, but it was like, they, they still just assumed it was this, like. You're still making those silly little videos still, with your friends? Yeah, there was that. And it was like, yeah, still, still doing that. And I think at this point, actually, I was still doing the, they, they thought this producing that I was doing of the show one day a week was the job. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I think I finally, I think I finally won them over with the studio. I think I yeah. took the studio. To convince which is them. A, which is really the end of the story, isn't it, Jesus? Because yeah. I, I would say like it's one hundred percent locked in now with the studio with yeah. my parents. I'm yeah. pretty sure my parents were nine, have been ninety nine percent for the last like four years. I agree. My but parents the, have been on, final one percent was the studio. My parents have been. Uh, um, they've always obviously been been in my corner and wanting us to succeed. But I think they finally uh, they they started seeing that success was there when. Uh, dad is a real analytical guy, so he would have just seen the numbers going up more and more. And I think he would have, honestly, when we probably passed like half a million subscribers or something, he would have I, been like... The thing is, from from my perspective, I totally understand why it took my family oh, a, a while to, to understand. Because at first, I was like, I'd show them these fucking cringy music videos. Yes. And, I, and, and I'd be like... What are you supposed uh, to say to that? Like, That's what, what I'm doing. And they, they're kind of like, like, oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. Like, please get understand. a real job. Yeah. That's what they're thinking. God, you're I a don't. lost cause, aren't you? And, and I have really messed up friends like you, have I? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, I'm frightened. I don't Uh-oh. understand. I don't Ooh. understand. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And then with the same energy, I, I'd kind of go like, Hey, so things are really starting to get. We've got like a hundred thousand subscribers now, and that's still, but they'll be kind of like blank behind the eyes. Going, yeah. I don't fully understand what that means, but I'm happy for you. I mean, as long as you're happy, and then kind of get to a million subscribers, and they, and they kind of they don't fully understand. And yeah, that, well, do you know what it is with parents? Why don't I think when it's with parents is when we start to get interviewed on New Zealand television. Oh, that's I was the, just that, about to bring that's, that up. That's the when, moment when, when we had. Like, a, oh, you. Oh. when we hit a hundred thousand subscribers and that was the first time that we got interviewed on TV. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for seven sharp, I think it was. Yeah, I think so. With, yeah. Uh, with Lucas De Jong. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, the first time we were on TV and you're getting all of your family and friends. It's so weird. It's like, we're already getting hundreds, probably not that tens of thousands of views on YouTube. And it takes getting on the news for people to be, yeah. oh my God. It validates us. Like, like that. And that's one of the reasons I'm still happy to do these stories from time to time is like the main reason is just to remind <laughs> mum and dad I'm actually doing all yeah. right. Like, <laughs> you know this, We're not re- going to get any subs through it. Recently, recently with the studio, it was like we did this kind of stuff that was on the, on the normal te- television. Yeah. And then out of the woodwork, the family starts going, wow, you're really doing well. Yeah. And it's like, man, oh, that's. 
I, Who that's nothing. You? That is literally like I couldn't care less about that. Yeah, this is, that, that's nothing. Yeah, the, look at the views over here. I still get people. <laughs> my my family more often reference the TV commercial I'm still in that's still on rotation that than the Viva work. Yeah. Like, oh, I saw you again on oh, the TV. My dad. Yeah. I was talking to him a few days ago, and 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 he gets up. He gets, he gets yeah, up. Yeah, but yeah. like he, he was like, oh, actually, it was my stepmom was like, um, oh, I saw it in your um. Yeah. Your friend, your friend, um, on that buddy, he, Ed, he's, he's doing well, isn't he? He's doing well. Like, it's that kind of like, oh, God. what do you mean? <laughs> like, it's that's just a fucking that's a nothing. Ad. It's nothing. It's so, uh, but I can so understand funny. that perspective as well because when I before I got yeah, into totally. this the the industry, this game that we're in. I, I just assumed anyone that was on a commercial yeah. had made it. You've made, you'd, it. You'd made it. I, I mm-hmm. have one last little story around the parent thing as well. Is There was a moment for my mum, which kind of included my dad as well, but um, it was around the time of Balance Route and the Kickstarter for that, and NPC Man had been popular for a long time, and I had like a pretty emotional moment with my mum because when I was 13, when I very first got into World of Warcraft, I didn't have a credit card because I was 13, mm. and the only way to pay for World of Warcraft was with a credit card. And so I like absolutely begged my mom in the lead up to World of Warcraft getting released. I was like, please, 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 I want a subscription for this game. And she said no, and she said no, and she said no, and she said no. And then eventually one day she relented and she paid, I paid her back, but she would use her credit card to pay for World of Warcraft. Yeah. And she, I think the first few months she did as a gift for me, but then after that I was paying her back. Um, Anyway, around the time of Baron's Route, I sat down with my mum and had a nice heart to heart. I was like, thank you so much for doing that for me because that literally turned me who I am, into who I am today and it's created yeah. a career for yeah, me. Yeah, wow. And yeah. I think me saying that to her and laying out in those kind of terms was she was like, oh, Jesus, okay, wow. Yeah, wow, oh, wow, is, I really is... could have messed up there. <laughs> to be yeah. fair, a lot of parents did mess up letting yeah, their yeah, kids yeah. have a credit card and <laughs> playing what work about. <laughs> Correct. But, <laughs> Correct. But in this case, it worked out. <laughs> but there, there must have also been... Uh, Super, 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 just like re- deep in the recesses part of your brain that was like, just kind of going, hey, mum, next time I ask for like, <laughs> to use your fucking gaming, credit card. Yeah. Don't you ever cross me. Don't you <laughs> like, ever hold back. Okay. Cause look, ne- where, look where this ended. Yeah. Like, look ne- at my career. Now. Never question me. Next, time, next time, time you walk in when I'm playing GTA 3 yeah. and there's a dead hooker in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't question it. In, in the yeah. game or in, in, in your bedroom, in your <laughs> game? Oh, you uh, and the, the game? And the, right, right, okay, good. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Remember all those years when you were telling me I shouldn't be gaming or I should like get outside and get some fresh air? Well, it looks like it turned out now, didn't it, mum? <laughs> it all turned out now, didn't it, mum? Yeah, straight up. Thank God. Thank God. That, like, if, the, if, if I hadn't, the, the amount of video games I played and the amount of youth that I spent playing video games, thank God. Thank oh, I God. T- t- we turned this into... A thing. Oh, but God, because we could so easily be really sad people still playing video games in our basements. Like, oh, they're not being successful. over just the waste of time rather than it being research for videos. Yeah, like, I, like, I'm not just, like, we're not dissing people who play video games and didn't start YouTube channels. It's, it was inhuman how many hours I played video games. I Entire summer holidays. Oh, bro. Just, like, and just oh, me. Like, really, so, like. Hashtag no regrets. No, no regrets <laughs> now. Legit. Yeah. No regrets now. No. No, no. No, there was a time. I, I fucking loved it the whole time. At the time, I did re- most. Of, I, I enjoyed most of the time, but there was a time uh, for me before you, Viva started like taking off that I was definitely like, oh, I don't know if that was if that was the best. best I don't call. regret it. I, I like all the times of my childhood playing video games. I, I, I was I was lost in that world, and I yeah. was loving it. I think maybe we play like I don't know. I was just bouncing between fast food games. You know what I mean? I was bouncing. Um, I was, it was Counter Strike, and it was Age of Empires two. So they weren't really fulfilling. They were drugs to oh, me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, quiet, please. What else you got there, Road Dog? Keep all this in. Keep the dead air in. in. Quiet, please. I'm oh, looking at my yeah, questions. No, audio medium, this is perfect. Quiet, quiet please. Quiet, please. Can, but I'm still thinking. Um, I've got big, long, boring that's, questions. That's fine. Because we, we could come with part up. three. Yeah. Yeah, we could part come with three, part yo. three because I feel like in true, we've talked about recent days a little bit, but yeah. in true reality, we've really only got properly up to kind of like the PUBG era. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yeah, I we mean, can, we need to talk about FPS logic and Witcher logic and things those like that, yeah. things we And then talk done. more, talk about more about how Viva is today as well. Balance, like, more yeah. about Balance route. Yeah. That's chapter three. Bro, Bro wrap us out, dog. Should wrap it up. This up. Yo. Woo. Woo. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yo. 
It's me and Eminem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Fever no. Part 2. Yo. Oh, these lyrics are straight Early from days. Eminem. From Yo, the top of your dumb. You say, oh, you're doing things, you're making skits. Yeah, you're going and you're saying things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're making epic PC, man. PUBG Logic, yeah, man. Yo. <laughs> Woo Early Woo days, early ways. Early times and early plays. Everybody knows that Rowan yeah. is cool. Yeah. I'm sitting here on a bathroom stool. Oh, shut up here. Yeah, that's what's up. Are you a, have you been on a bathroom oh, stool this whole the entire time? Yeah. time? Yeah. Your bathroom stool looks exactly That's a wrap. It looks so similar really to a chair. Too. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't bad, Rowan. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of meetings, I'm going to go do a freaking test downstairs for VFX. Bye. Bye. Bye.